Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Advent. We're glad to have everyone worshiping with us. I'm Pastor Rebecca Gordon, again covering Pastor Jenna's maternity leave. Um, want to welcome all those who might possibly be visiting with us this morning. Please introduce yourself on the way out of worship. Want to uh, raise a couple of uh, things for you for your uh, announcements. There is a, a hard copy on the table in the narthex. Those were also mailed to members this week. Uh, you will notice that the quilt raffle is outside. Uh, you'll have till next week for that, so please uh, visit the craft fair and the quilt raffle. Also, uh, uh, just a word of note, I noticed in your announcements that Pads is really in need of certain items right now. Gloves, scarves, hats, long underwear, coats, toiletries for both men and women. Um, it's times continue to be very hard for our siblings in need, so it's a wonderful time of year to pick up a few extra things while you are out. Also, a note about our schedule. Next week, we will be having a joint worship service, one at 9.30 a.m., and that will be our, uh, our children's pageant, our children's ministry time. So please join us for that one and that celebratory worship. Christmas Eve services will be at 5 p.m. and 9.45 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Christmas Day, there will be no worship, but then on the 26th, that's a Sunday, there will be one joint worship service at 9.30 for lessons and carols. So just continue to keep that schedule in mind uh, during the coming weeks. A prayer request to share with the congregation. Uh, uh, Don Lewick is in the hospital with pneumonia. My understanding is that he is stable, and so we continue to keep him in prayer for healing. Also, in your hymnal, you will notice that we are in a new, uh, a new uh, setting in worship. You will find the page numbers for the worship liturgy in the front portion of your hymnal, and the page numbers are on the bottom outside corners. For your hymns, you'll find those in the back of the hymnal, and those hymn numbers are on the top outside corners. So just a little differentiation about where to find your liturgy and your hymns. So now let us turn our hearts and minds to worshiping Christ our Lord.
and of one another. Most merciful God, we that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. Give us to me and to you, God, for your need. God, I will give them. And I will give them to them. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. But the Savior of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, redeem us. and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We continue. <laughs>
we're going to come for Christmas. And this was very exciting because they lived far away and I didn't get to see them very often. Now my brother Chris and I counted down the days until they were going to come and finally the day came. Grandma and Grandpa are coming today. Yay! So my brother and I went outside to wait for them. And as it turned out, we had a lot of snow that year, so we decided to make a snow fort while we waited. And we had so much fun building the fort, and sometimes we throw a few snowballs at each other, and it was just a lot of fun. And then we waited some more, so we built another part onto our snow fort, and we had some more fun waiting, waiting, waiting. And then finally we saw Grandma and Grandpa's car come around the corner, and we were like, yay, Grandma and Grandpa are here. And we ran up beside them and followed them into the driveway. It was just really, really fun. I don't know if you can remember a time like that when you were waiting for something to happen and excited about it, um, and you knew what was going to happen, but you just didn't know when. There's a lot of joy in that kind of waiting, isn't there? And you think, what's going to happen? But I don't know when. Well, okay, we're in the season of Advent, right? And this is a season of waiting. <coughs> waiting, waiting, waiting. We're waiting for Christmas, and we're remembering the times that people were waiting for their Messiah before Jesus was born. They've been waiting and living such hard lives and waiting for someone to come and save them. And Jesus was born, and now we're waiting for Jesus to come again. Maybe you know he's going to come back? Yes. And so we're kind of waiting for that, too. Now, I have brought here this thing <laughs> that is our Advent wreath that we use at home. Um, it's obviously not a wreath, it's more like an advent log, but it still has um, four candles for every service, for every Sunday, and then we have a white candle in the middle for Christmas Eve. Now, Mr. Schoenfield and I have been lighting these two candles. You can tell they're dripping and they're, there's a lot going on. This one, not so much. It hasn't tripped yet. This is the candle for today. It's a different color, isn't it? Maybe you suppose it's pink. Oh, if you've been paying attention today. <laughs> it's, it's pink for joy. It's a lot happier color than the purple ones. And this is a Sunday that's all about joy. Mm -hmm. We have banners that we put up for each Sunday. You've been sitting and looking at that one, I know. I don't know if you can see the banner, but it's right over there and it says joy. So yeah, today is the Sunday of joy. And it helps us remember that we can be joyful while we wait. Now Mrs. Hansen is going to read some um, verses from the Bible today. And one of the things <coughs> she's going to read is from Philippians. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And that word joy is right in the middle of rejoice, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So. That helps us remember. We've got a lot to help us remember to be joyful while we wait. Because we have so much to be joyful about, right? Christmas is coming. Jesus, our Savior, was born on Christmas. And someday, Jesus is going to come back again and take us to heaven and make everything wonderful. At least I think that's what's going to happen. That's what the Bible tells us, right? So there's a lot to be joyful. So we don't have a pink candle in our Advent wreath here, but you might have a pink candle in your Advent wreath at home, or you might see the pink candle. Just remember, today is a day of joy. Joy while we wait. Okay, let's say a prayer. <clears throat> Dear God, thank you for this Sunday of joy. Thank you that Christmas is coming. Thank you that you sent Jesus to be our Savior. And thank you that Jesus is coming again. 
What do you want to do? You can tell me for First reading is from the book of Zephaniah, the third chapter. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing, as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you, so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change the, the, their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm comes from the book of Isaiah, 12th chapter, verses 2 through 6. We will speak it responsibly. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might and has become my salvation. And you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call on God's name, make known the deeds of the Lord among the nations, proclaim that this name is exalted. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The second reading is from the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do. 
In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. And the tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not exhort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water. But one who is more powerful than I is coming, and I am not, un I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. Lord God, open my lips that I would declare your praise and open our hearts that we would receive your word of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Just what do you suppose drew them there? What was the attraction? They are flocking to the wilderness to see John, this Baptist. Apparently, it was a popular thing to do in that day, get baptized in the wilderness. One thought is, perhaps this was done to declare one's allegiance to the God of Israel. But here's John. John's words speak for themselves. He's fiery. He's out in the wilderness, out beyond the city limits. And everyone is here, not just your regular folks. There's the military, the soldiers. There's the business and political figures, the tax collectors. Matthew's gospel even has the religious leaders there, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Everyone from town is coming out. To see John. But why? Something compelling must have drawn them there. I mean, he's calling them names. You brood of vipers. Wrath is coming. Repent. You're not safe just because you're sons and daughters of Abraham. You think you're God's chosen ones? Well, there's an axe at the root of that tree. Bear good fruit or else. Yikes. This is good news? Somehow it's drawing crowds. Now we know big voices can draw a crowd, that's for sure. Sometimes for the right reasons, sometimes for the wrong ones. Put it mildly, there are a lot of voices, competing voices, in our wilderness of the world right now. Some pretty loud, some more quiet, some abrasive. There are some very consequential voices out there right now in this moment of history. Of course, I've been thinking a lot about voices this week. For years, we've considered these voices and the place that they take in our lives, forming our opinions, shaping our history. And as a society, we've been raising the question of the trustworthiness of these voices around us. Corruption by those in power is not a new thing, particularly abuse by the powerful of those with less power. We see evidence every day that the loudest and most persistent voice isn't always the most truthful or accurate. History has proven this. 
in Jesus' day and before. And so here is John. And he's got a message for these baptizees. New Testament scholar Rolf Jacobson says of this passage, John sees society as broken. He's sick of that present day presumption. Don't presume to say to yourself, it ends, and Abraham as our ancestor. Whatever you perceive that advantage to be, that is not going to save you, he says. No? Okay. So for these folks, there's no privilege in ancestry, no resting on the laurels of God's favor. No, those who come to John, those who are seeking baptism, they're asking him, all right then, so what shall we do? And so he speaks to them, to who they are, to their context, to their reality. You've got two coats? Share one. Extra food? Definitely share. The tax collectors want to know, well, what should we do? I'll start with don't steal. The soldiers want to know, okay, what about us? Don't shake anyone down. Don't take bribes. Be honest. Be satisfied with your salary and don't supplement it with extortion. Their allegiance has to be more than in word or ancestry alone. It makes a difference. John is calling them to account. He undermines the presumption that just because they are presumably in with God, that anything goes. Nope, that identity comes not just with rights, it comes with responsibilities. Tough words, this voice in the wilderness. Especially on the third Sunday of Advent, when we really just wanted to be Christmas already. Right? And the cards need to be sent out. We need the packages to the post office. And the guest list and the gift list need to be finalized. John's voice is pretty loud for us this week. He's got a pretty forceful message. And the people are responding in John's world. They are flocking to him. They are filled with expectation. Was this John? Was this the one that they were waiting for? Was he the long-awaited Messiah? Is this the voice they've been waiting for? And John tells them, no, not it. I'm not the one you're looking for. The one you're looking for, the real truth, the real light, the true word, I'm not even worthy to untie his shoes. I simply prepare his way. Those seeking baptism from John, they think a baptismal wash will save their skins. But John says, there's more to it than that. Share what you have. Don't steal. Have integrity in your business dealings. Be honest in your relationships. Use your voice to speak the truth in love. Be satisfied with what you have. They're fruit worthy of repentance. And the fruit of the Spirit are these. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, this is the test, the test we can apply to the voices we encounter. Those there that day were there for baptism. A baptismal wash is so much more than a cleansing of the skin. We too gain our identity in these baptismal waters. In our baptism, we are named and claimed children of God, 
baptized with the Holy Spirit, and our allegiance makes a difference as well. And so we ask, with those of Jesus' day, teacher, what should we do? And Jesus speaks to us in our reality. We all have two coats, literally and figuratively. We share. We seek honesty in our profession and in our relationships. We don't steal. We're happy with what we have, not coveting what we don't. We don't take the Lord's name in vain. We keep the Sabbath. We resist evil. We welcome the stranger. We listen to the stories of people not like us. We take care of each other. We pray for our enemies. We take the higher road. We become trustworthy ourselves. Because violence and fear and hatred, met with violence and fear and hatred, is just violence and fear. What is the true word? We test the voices. Do the voices create division, isolation, distrust, anger, and fear? Our voices often speak out of fear and vulnerability, self-interest and arrogance. Jesus came with a winnowing fork to burn away that chaff, the fear, the confusion, the hatred, the apathy, the entitlement. Jesus comes to give us a new identity, not an ancestral identity, something stronger, something deeper than even our DNA, an eternal identity as God's children. And so we listen for God's voice above all and seek how to join with it. We do this not on our own strength, not for our own glory, but because of the strength and grace and mercy of the one in whose name we are baptized. The one in whose name we serve and pray. The one in whose name we place all hope, all trust. Jesus. In our world, just as in John's and in Jesus, our voices of love and grace and hope and accountability must be more persistent than those of raw hatred, narrow self-interest, heartless violence, or hopeless fear. Let us use our voices, but only after we've used our ears <coughs> our hearts. God knows to speak with this voice is no small task. In fact, God was willing to live, to speak, and to die because of this. This word. This voice. And thanks be to God, in our hopefulness, in our faithfulness, we await a Savior this Advent. We're not just waiting for a baby. We are waiting for a Savior, for the one who proclaims, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. <clears throat> that voice, God's word has already won the day and will win it in full in the day that is to come. We have God's promise in Jesus, our Emmanuel, for that. Let us rejoice in
watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Holy God, renew your church and raise up leaders who announce your good news. Grant peace to congregations and seminarians in the midst of transition. Guide the work of candidacy and call committees. Hear us, O oh God. Creating God, your spirit brought forth the earth and all that is in it. Breathe life into us that we are inspired to live in harmony with one another and the planet. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Shepherding God, we will lead your people in paths of righteousness. Raise up prophets in our own day who warn against captivity to greed and point us to the freedom found in generosity. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Nurturing God, you come near in times of worry and need. Cradle us in your arms that we trust you and are not afraid. Attend to any who are hungry, imprisoned, or ill this day. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoice in God. You exalt over us in singing. Enliven the song of this assembly and bless the ministry of church musicians instruments and dance, join our voices to the song of all creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for Christine Jacobson and family, for healing from cancer. From Phil Bach, one of the Reburgers who passed away recently. We pray for George C. for healing. For Suzanne for healing of broken bones and a concussion from a bicycle accident. Also, for recovery from surgery, to remove a cancer mask, and may it be denied. We pray especially for the victims and survivors of the tornadoes in Kentucky and Illinois, for Ruth, Rita, and Stephen. All these we mention now, and those we uh, say in the silence of our hearts, hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for your servants who showed us your goodness and grace. By the power of your spirit, keep us steadfast in faith until we make our home with you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers in those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, The peace of Christ be with you always. And always. Share that peace with one another, remembering one another's safety and comfort.
Let us pray. God of our
Yeah, well, good. <laughs> 